hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at one of the AQA Alevology required practicals number four, looking at the leakage of pigment from beetroot cells depending on varying concentrations of alcohol. I'm going to talk you through how we set up the practical, what analysis we can do with our results, how we can change the practical to improve the analysis, the sort of stuff that comes up in the exams all the time, and then we can look at sources of error and further questions, if you want even more, will be available in the practical handbook, which is on my website. In this video, we're going to be looking at the effect of alcohol concentration on the leakage of pigment. The pigment within beetroot cells is within the vacuole that I've coloured in here. If the membranes are working, functioning as they should, it will keep the pigment where it is supposed to be. However, damaged membranes will allow the pigment to leak out. And the more damaged that they are, the more pigment will leak out. And that is what we are going to be looking at today. We're going to be increasing the amount of damage that we do to the membranes and then measuring the amount of pigment that leaks out. Depending on what equipment you've got available at school, you will be able to do this to different levels of accuracies at different volumes. For example, if you've got pipettes, you can do accurately very small volumes, but if you've only got measuring cylinders or um, burettes, then you're going to have to do larger volumes to get this accurate. We are only using small amounts of solution for this because we're putting in very small discs. So we're only using two meals. But if you make up only two meals of your beetroot extract at a time, there's more chance of error. So in this, I'm going to be making up a total volume of 10 or you could even do 20 um, centimetres cubed, and then that will reduce the amount of error that there is. You can do this with uh, measuring cylinders, two centimetres cubed, you'd probably have to use a um, something like a Gilson pipette. If you want to use these numbers to do two centimetres cubed, then you'll just need to divide them all by five. The really important thing to check at the end is that all of your numbers add up to 10 in total because that's the volume that I'm using or 2 in total if that's the volume that you are going for in the end. I've gone with 10 because I think the maths is easier and the volumes are easier to handle. So the first thing we need to do is to make our colour standards. We're going to start over here at zero, which is going to be pure water. Tubes two, four, six, eight, and then tube ten, which is going to be pure beetroot extract. Now, the beetroot extract is going to be and have been prepared for you. It is going to vary in colour between school to school. Mine is this absolutely glorious pink purple colour here. Very similar uh, colour to my nail uh, hair, in actual fact. Um, beautiful pink purple colour there. And then tube zero is going to be pure water. And we're going to make a dilution series from pure water all the way up to pure beetroot extract. And this is going to be our standard series, our calibration series. So we can use this to determine what our results look like. Now there is a table for you to fill in. It is better if you do this with kind of like really carefully with very, very accurate measuring and small pets. Or if you make up a larger volume, then there's going to be less room for error in that. I've got these uh, smaller graduated pipettes which have marks up the side um, and this is what I'm going to use to make our standards. So I can put in measured amounts of the beetroot extracts into each of these and then dilute them uh, with water so that we get our different standards. So if I just tilt that, you can see they've each got different amounts in. For the 100% either side, the, the volumes don't necessarily matter too much because these are just standards. We're not actually putting anything into these. But it is 
always a good idea to measure things as carefully as possible. You should now be able to see a gradient of colour across here. I'll just get uh, some white paper. Stand that behind and you should be able to see that colour gradient a little bit better. White paper is really helpful for helping you work out things. So this is part one. That's our standard colours. Yours may look slightly different. That is fine as long as you've done this carefully and as long as you've done it properly. And now we can move on to part two. I don't have a water bath like I'm doing this in summer, so it is very, very hot. So I'm just going to turn this around so we can have our second set of test tubes. So we are going to have 20% alcohol, 40% alcohol, 60% alcohol, 80% alcohol and 100% alcohol and these are going to be probably already prepared for you or if you have to dilute them yourself then it is going to be done in exactly the same way that we just did the dilution series. We do not need much in these because we're just putting just small roots in there. Now these tubes here with your clear alcohol solution in need to go into a water bath until they are at the right temperature but I do not have the luxury of the water bath. Once you've checked the temperature of the alcohol has reached the correct temperature then we can get our beetroot discs out. Here are some I prepared earlier and blotted earlier, made a huge absolute mess. Um, useful sets otherwise they are going to get all over your fingers and then put two discs in each tube these discs are very tiny two millimeters thick and they are six millimeters in diameter you can see this one here it's going around a bit that the pigment is starting to diffuse into the solution Yours are going to need to have bungs on so that the alcohol doesn't evaporate. They're going to need to be gently agitated every minute and we can already start to see the colour coming out. After our five minutes of incubation you can see this has gone a different colour. If I just take these out, hold them up in front of one of my practice exam papers you can see the color variation in there especially if I agitate it finally one more time you then need to transfer these solutions not the beetroot disc into a separate container then once we've done that we can start taking our samples and comparing it saying is it and again, this is going to be best to do against the of paper. Is it darker or lighter than this sample here? Is it darker or lighter than the next sample over? Do that with all of them and record your results. This is a qualitative experiment, which means you are looking at it to see what the results are. So there are lots of sources of error in this. The calibration solutions might not have been made correctly. The differences in people's eyesight and actual colour of the solutions. Um, water and alcohol are different solutions. So your beetroot calibration curve and your beetroot in alcohol might actually be slightly different colours. Not fully drying the discs before adding them to the alcohol, so there would be some water on there. This would then change the concentration of the alcohol solution, diluting it slightly and changing the um, results. The experiment not being done at a stable temperature. This might mean that some tubes were warmer than others if there's a gradient in the water bath packaged beetroot in any way they membranes are going to be already damaged for example if they've been pickled in vinegar 
there are a number of alternatives, ways that you can improve this experiment and ways that you can make it ever so slightly different in the exam so you are doing something different. We can use a colorimeter so we can get the exact absorbance of the um, solution and this is going to make it into a quantitative experiment. You can get the percentage absorbance of light and then you can draw a calibration curve. This will give you exact numerical values and compare samples to the curve better than just using your eye. Instead of using alcohol to damage the membranes, you could do it with detergents. It needs to be a clear detergent so it doesn't interfere with your results. You could also change the temperature, both freezing and heating will damage membranes. So that is a way to expand the experiment or a way they might talk about it slightly differently in an exam setting.